Don't you think that uh, all global problem, modern global problem, uh, have uh, the common source? Yeah. We? Yeah. yeah. Anthropological catastrophe, something happened with human being, some kind of blind spot. Right. We don't see and we don't have will to act in right. Right. Way. Yeah. That's right. And so that's why it's so important that we pay attention not only to states of consciousness and waking up, but to these multiple intelligences and growing up. Because they're the ones that do that kind of thinking. Mm -hmm. And so by putting both of these together, we are addressing these two central areas of human growth and development, both mm -hmm. of which are absolutely crucial. And starting to do that, then not only can individuals lead healthier, fuller, happier, more fully functioning lives, but so can our solutions and the world around us. Mm -hmm. That's the contributions mm -hmm. that we can start to make. Yeah. And so it's, it's, on the one hand, it's sort of the bodhisattva vow on steroids. It's just, it's just really, you know, releasing it mm -hmm. and saying, okay, that's fine, that's fine, but oh, wait, you, you're not including waking up. Shame on you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so here's a few things to practice, you know, get, start doing that um, and you know the same with growing up and the same with showing up and the same with cleaning up um, but we're at that period and we're at that period where these sort of integral approaches the the today's version of integral which is built on all the previous integral mm -hmm. and what happens at each stage of integral because evolution keeps going forward, yeah, new sure. things are added. Wil so Wilbur integral has... Wilbur 6, Wilbur 7. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So we have to keep adding on the stuff that's added, yeah. if it's going to be really integral. Um, and the major discovery uh, over the past hundred years has been these structure stages of, of development. So, um, by, by including those, then we're ensuring that individuals are expanding their perspectives so they can mm -hmm. see more and more of these issues. So it really does go from first person to second person to third person to fourth person to fifth person to sixth person and higher. And each one of those mm. has a bigger view of the world around it. And so it's going to include more and more and more things. Yeah, this and is a high that, dream. All this is so great. But, but, I have a big question. Yeah. Throughout the whole history of humanity, there were probably th hundred thousand of high developed human being creative open free even enlightened great teachers of humanity and i am sure that uh, the deepest wish was to help the rest of humanity there are to to help to uh, the rest of humanity to achieve the same quality of life good um, wholeness, uh, happiness, uh, enlightened states, creative states, everything, the great genius of humanity. And what we see, we have global problem, we have tensions, we have majority of humanity living in fighting, in yep. war. Yep. Why it happens, why greatest human my, uh, beings uh, were not able ho to help? The rest. That Why is, we are all not yet enlightened? That is one of the really perplexing problems 
And even Bill Clinton, and I, I this is sort of patting myself on the back, but at at Davos, at the World Economic Forum, mm -hmm. uh, when he was talking with Klaus, the founder, mm -hmm. they spent an afternoon together. He said that he felt that what the world needed was an integral consciousness the way Ken Wilber described it mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. The Marriage of Sense and Soul. Mm -hmm. He says, my concern, as it is his, is that there's not very many people at that stage. And yet, if that stage is needed for us, then that's a real problem. How do you get people yeah. to that stage? And it's one of the bizarrest paradoxes of development. It makes sense when you think about it. But when you stand back and look at it, it's just idiotic. It's like the duckbill platypus. I mean, it just, how did that get there? Mm -hmm. But you, you have that the higher stages of development, generally speaking, are rarer. Because you have to go through all the earlier ones. Mm -hmm. And if nothing else, the people drop out. Some people just stop. I better go to drink, <clears throat> better. to watch baseball and drink, drink beer, yeah, right. to get high. Yeah. <laughs> and yet, if you look at somebody who has, say, a mythic ethnocentric view, they don't have a world-centric view. So that's why so many fundamentalists religious believers don't believe in climate warming mm -hmm. because that's a, a global world-centric phenomena mm -hmm. and somebody at ethnocentric has a little bit of difficulty conceiving that so that becomes a problem because 70 percent of the world's population is at ethnocentric or lower. So part of the real problem is that we've seen that we have these many dimensions of reality, both in ourselves and in the world. And we've seen that these are there. They're arising moment to moment. They're impacting us moment to moment, whether we know about it or not. We have overwhelming evidence now for all of these factors. Yeah. And so we know they're there, we know they're arising, we know they're impacting. And so what we really want is at least some people that are at a stage that can see these. Somebody at a mythic ethnocentric stage, as the word ethnocentric, means it, it's just group, just one group, mm -hmm. not other groups, and therefore not realities connected with them or the world at large, for that matter. And so it's a real problem in terms of how we can get everybody on board for, let's say, climate change and work on that. Um, it's common knowledge that there are a large number of individuals, um, often uh, religious fundamentalists, that don't even believe in climate change. Mm -hmm. And it's not so much that they've looked at a world-centric view and weighed the evidence for and against it, is that they can't see a world-centric mm -hmm. view. Mm -hmm. And so they just say, I don't believe in it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's one of the strange things about development that the, the higher stages of development are harder to get to 
You have to go through more previous stages, and therefore there are fewer of them. So the stages we need the most of are the stages we have the fewest of. That is a dilemma. That is, ah, it kind of drives me crazy sometimes. There's, in, in Douglas Adams' Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> there's a book called 53 More of God's Biggest Mistakes. Hmm. <laughs> well, this is one of them. This, this, this is just, it's all backward. I mean, it's you know, so... It's, <laughs> ah. So, um, but this is what we really have to, you know, work with. Now, one of the things that's happened uh, with the rise of a kind of an integral, loosely worldwide movement, mm -hmm. um, again, about 5% of the population, um, but they're bright, they're smart, most of them are on computers, uh, most of them kind of keep looking around. Um, if they are integral, then they've been trying to explain this integral view to their colleagues mm -hmm. for many years, and their colleagues aren't there, and so they can't see it as Robert Keegan puts it in his book, in over our heads, that some of these structures are just, we haven't developed to them yet. So they're over our heads. We can't see them. We can't even conceive them. Mm -hmm. We don't know about them. And yet if that's where all our problems are, and you can't even see it, you can't see the problems. And you certainly can't help with the solutions. 